Good morning, guys. I come to you guys at 4 a.m. We got, are headed to Kentucky Horse Park to go to Pony Finals. I'll see you guys when I'm a little more awake. Puppy check. Hi, guys. I'm here with mine. We just made a stop for gas, and it's 9 a.m. Once we arrived at Kentucky Horse Park after a very long truck and trailer ride, it was around I think 3 o'clock, maybe 4-ish that we arrived and we went ahead and unloaded sawdust, got lime all settled and everything and then unloaded everything else from the truck and trailer and since this show was a week long, we went ahead and got an extra stall to put all the sawdust, all the hay, and everything else I needed into that extra stall so that it wouldn't be in the aisle. And here's a few clips of Lime in her stall. Then we let Lime settle in at Kentucky Horse Park and we drove around and grabbed our exhibitor bag for Pony Finals, which consisted of a really cute Pony Finals book bag and a first timer ribbon since it's my first time at Pony Finals and an exhibitor ribbon, which was navy and white, which I'll show you guys pictures of. And it had been about an hour of driving around, so that gave Lime enough time to settle in. So we went ahead and tacked her up and got her ready to ride in the Rolex ring. And if you guys already know, Pony Finals is normally held in the Walnut ring. But due to COVID restrictions, they decided to hold it in the Rolex ring so that it would be bigger and more open and allow a bigger audience. So here's a few clips from that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Pony Finals. To give a little more information about Pony Finals, originally in 1959, the British National Pony Society and the British Show Pony Society challenged American pony riders to an international pony hunter competition. And it was first held in New York City and US pony riders met head to head with British pony riders in small and large divisions. And sadly, the Americans lost the first time, but two years later, the British National Pony Society held the competition, and this time, American riders were prepared, and for two weeks at the famed Olympic Training Center in Gladstone, New Jersey, the training proved to be beneficial, and the United States won. And come 1967, the American Horse Association created Pony Finals which is a national event open to all members who meet the qualifying criteria. And as you guys already know, if you've watched previous videos, I've been working on campaigning towards qualifying for Pony Finals by going to A shows. And in order to qualify, you have to receive champion or reserve champion in the small, large, or medium pony division. And as you guys will notice in a lot of these following clips, I'm working on what's called the model, which counts 25% towards your overall score, which is judging the pony's confirmation. So pony finals is more of what I would call a breed show where they look at the quality of your pony, how well they're built, how well they move, and how well they jump. It's not based on the rider, it's just based on essentially the rider's ability to present that pony to the best of that pony's ability and the judges are focusing in on your pony and not you and so the first part's the model which is 25 percent and then they have the under saddle which is like the flat class where the judges look at the movement and that also counts 25 percent and then which counts 50 percent is the over fences portion which is where they look at the strides down the lines look at their confirmation over the jumps look at how well they jump and their knees over the fences and things like that and that's 
essentially pony finals in a very small nutshell. And then since pony finals itself is mainly based on the pony, in 1984, an equitation competition was added, which is the infamous pony medal competition, which most of the years it's been held in that Alltech indoor ring, but this year it was actually held in the Rolex ring due to the fact that the indoor wasn't available due to COVID restrictions. And anyways, one more thing added in 1999 was the Green Hunter Pony Championship, which means green ponies have not been to finals and they get one year to go and compete at finals in the green division and then after they've competed at finals in that green division they move up to regulars one more event held at pony finals is the pony jumpers which is a stepping stone for many junior riders who want to move into the grand prix ring one day and i know they jump around three six After riding Lime and working her in the Rolex ring, I walked around the grounds and there were so many barns everywhere. And the weekend before, which many pony final ponies attend, is the Kentucky Summer Classic. That's why a bunch of the barns already have ribbons as the Kentucky Summer Classic is held before pony finals to get your pony in the ring. Unfortunately, Lime and I didn't do the Kentucky Summer Classic as it would have made our trip two weeks long and that just would have been a really, really long show. As you guys can tell, I'm moving into day two as I'm wearing yellow and I got my breakfast at the hotel since it was a buffet and here's me feeling orange juice and just getting my breakfast bowl which is in one of those little oven heater things and then a waffle and I tried to film me getting my waffles out but I just couldn't with one hand so sorry about that. But anyways, here's with Pi and me in the car, and here's us driving up to Kentucky Horse Park. Hi guys, I'm here at Kentucky Horse Park. We just arrived. Today is Tuesday, and I just need to saddle up and get Lime her morning breakfast, get her settled in, and then get her tacked so then we can ride and hack in the Rolex ring. I'll see you guys later. So to start off my morning, I did hack in the Rolex ring for about 10 minutes and then my trainer had me go ahead and school in this ring so Lime could be as close as possible to that stone layer ring as we paid for a warm up ticket round in the stone layer ring. And how it works at Kentucky Horse Park is they have what's called warm-up tickets, which is where you get 10 minutes in a ring set up with over fences for your pony's height. And since I'm on a large pony, they set it up to two nine to three feet, and you have 10 minutes to work in that ring. So you wanna have your pony nice and warmed up before you go in so that you can just do your over fences work and stay under that 10 minute line. with it only being me for the first three jumps of doing the warm up ticket around because normally they jam about three to five ponies all jumping at once. So we started off with that yellow single then we come down this bending line and that was just to warm us up and get us started. <laughs> Since I got left behind down that bidding line, I went ahead and wanted to do it again. So 
so here's Lyman and I approaching it once more. We come in and we land on our right lead, so that gave us a better distance, I think, to it. And here we go, and we landed on our left, so we changed to our right. It was a little late, but that's okay. Anyways, I come around, and I think I do it once more. stride and the turn was really awkward anyways lime still saves me and does the two strides down it just with a little extra tail flick which is completely fine then we come to the left bending line and i just for whatever reason am better to the left and i think this line we pretty much nail compared to the right line as i struggle for whatever reason on that right lead just to come down and make it more fluid and not as choppy. Oh, if you think dodging the ponies is enough work as it is in the warm ring, you also have to dodge the trainers standing in the middle of the ring. Just a fun tip, do not run them over. Like I just about did going into that outside single. Anyways, I come around and then I trot because there's no more jumps to go to as I already did that outside line and line was really good. Then I have this two stride film from a different point of view. As you guys can see, it looks way better from the front than it does from the back. And it looks really good. And then here I come down this bending line. And it kind of looks funny from the back, but that's okay. And I come down it. And I really like this line as it was pretty fluid. And it was pretty consistent coming in distance-wise. And I come to an... And here's the course with all the pieces finally put together. Riding line was done later ring, I went ahead and worked on modeling in the Rolex ring since it was still open to schooling as I think this was the last day to school in the Rolex ring and I just wanted to get as much time in that ring as I could. So I showed her those bleachers because they do rattle when people walk on them which makes them kind of spooky. And then I practiced modeling and jogging because that was one of the parts I was most stressed about. And as you guys can tell, Lime's pretty good about picking up that trot. I just needed to get her a little more forward. That's why I pulled on her. And I was really pleased with this as Lime starts to get pretty smart and figures out every time you come across the long side you trot so i just walked her around so that she understood she had to listen to me and not try to do what she thinks she's supposed to do which is kind of funny with lime is she wants to please you and tries to anticipate what you're going to ask of her so here i just pet her and tell her she's a good girl for holding still and then i walk up to the camera and I just walk her around once more in the Rolex ring so that she gets used to it and isn't spooky.
This short clip just shows you that there's a ton of ponies schooling in that Rolex ring and that's why I mainly just led Lime around this weird cross section because I didn't want to get run over. Then after taking Lime in the Rolex ring, I put her away, cleaned out her stall, got her new water and things like that. I went and watched the pony yoga clinic because I wanted to see what it was, what it was all about. So I took a few clips of that. Hi guys, welcome back to Three Chestnuts today. Today is Tuesday and we're actually not showing today as I show on Thursday and Friday. But Lime and I schooled around in the Rolex thing and did some flat work and then they do what's called ticketed warm-ups where three to five ponies can school in a ring with jump set to the large pony stride and height with an in and out. So Lime and I went and did that and I have some footage from that that you guys will get to see and I'll plug those in and I'll see you guys later. Next on my list of things to do was look at all the vendors and oogle and google over all the pony finals gear and all the tack that all the vendors had up for sale. So I took some clips of the vendors because that's one of, to me, the things I've wanted to see the most. I was kind of disappointed because there weren't more vendors, but I think due to COVID they didn't allow as many vendors, but the vendors there had lots of cool stuff and they even had a horse box, which I filled the inside up. After touring around and looking at all the vendors, I went to the Rolex ring to go watch the large regular pony division, but then it was delayed due to the fact it was pouring rain and lightning to the ground. So I got a few clips of the rain and on Facebook some of the temporary stalls even began to flood so people had to dig ditches just to make sure the stalls did not get flooded. It was kind of crazy the amount of rain that came all pouring down all at once. So, the large regular pony division, and I think the smalls, which are today, got postponed till 2 o'clock, 2.30ish, and originally, I know the large regulars were supposed to start at 12, so it's gonna be a while, I guess, before anyone gets to show today, because it's lightning and thunder and rain. The rain has finally calmed down so we can get back to the stall. Luckily, we found shelter under the Rolex thing as we were right nearby it when it started raining and thundering. What? Luckily, Lime and I already did our overfences schooling and our flat work, so we won't need to ride much more today since it is so rainy and it's so lightning. <laughs> See you later.
after the rain finally settled down, I spun through the vendors one more time and took a few more clips for you guys. So after the rain, I went back to a couple of the vendors and filmed inside. This particular vendor was kind of like a trailer and it had things inside of it and I filmed inside and they had breeches, coats, um, show supplies, and all bits and bobs, everything you could need from bathing stuff, grooming stuff, to show stuff. Then I went to an open house for the new USCF headquarters that has been around for about, I think, over a year now. But I got to look at the inside, look at all the cool things that from awards from past years and information about different famous writers. I found this so interesting to look at. And then after that, I went and grazed line and I filmed this cute clip of that little black and white small pony because it was absolutely adorable. I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of my Kentucky Horse Park Pony Finals series. This is day one and day two, so please stay tuned for part two as I'll be schooling in the walnut ring, doing the model phase of Pony Finals and the under saddle phase. And then for my last vlog will be my over fences portion and I'll include what I placed and the overall placings so i hope you guys make sure to like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for those videos i'll see you guys next time